In this video, we're going to learn about transient analysis and multiple load steps applied to a model. So we're going to create a very simple block and fix it in one end and apply a ramped load like this to the other end of the block. So uh, no stress at time zero. In a ramped mode, it goes from zero to 100 Pascal stress on the top surface. And then in another second, from second one to second two, it goes from 100 to minus 100 Pascal stress or normal stress on the top surface of the block. So I'm using a block to uh, save time on the modeling part of this video and jump into the solution set up for a transient analysis. But because we're going to be in a linear elastic uh, material model definition, transient analysis doesn't really apply to this kind of problem. But this is just a demonstration of how to set up transient uh, set solution set uh, options properly for a typical analysis. So with that said, let's go to ANSYS and make this uh, model. So the first thing I have to do is to start pre-processing. So prep seven and select an element type. I want to pick element type 185, which is a lower order um, structural analysis or st structural element type. I don't need a real constant, so I can jump into material properties. Say MP, Young's modulus, one, and let's give 200 gigapascals, which is appropriate for steel. For Poisson ratio, I can give PRXY, material model one, let's give 0.27. And for density, let's give 7800. And density is essential for transient analyses because uh, it is a time dependent analysis and uh, in, in those equations mass is part of the equation. As a result we need to apply density otherwise ANSYS will, ANSYS will throw a warning at us. Now let's create a very simple block. So I say block in x direction go from 0 to 0.1 in y direction go from 0 to 1 and in z direction go from 0 to 0.1. So a block is created. If I look at it 3D, now it's time to mesh. Just to be in the practical side of analysis, I put type, the reference number is 1, material, let's say 1 also. And let's give element size of 0 0.05 to have a uh, good looking mesh and then V mesh which is for meshing the volume one or all I could say and the mesh is created it's pretty um, coarse but it, it gets the point across of how to apply a uh, transient analysis to a model now let's select the nodes at the bottom surface which is here at y equals zero I could say n cell s location at y equals zero. If I do n plot, you can see the nodes are selected. I can say d all all zero, which means for all the nodes, apply all the degrees of freedom and make them zero. So that is done. I can say all cell and e plot. Now the model is ready I have, I have to apply the load on the top surface which is here but the load changes over time so I'm going to do that during the solution step I do Finney now come to solution and the first thing I have to do is to define the analysis type which is transient so n type comma trans short for transient and now I have a transient analysis because this is a time dependent analysis so uh, we have to define time. We could also define automatic time stepping, which means if analysis is running smoothly, ANSYS can increase the time step, or if analysis is not running smoothly, if it's not converging, ANSYS will not convert, uh, will not do, or, or, or make the time steps smaller. So if I come to the help documentation and take a look at auto time step under um, here, auto time step specifies whether to use automatic time stepping or load stepping. So 
you could say off, which means regardless of how the simulation is going, whether smoothly or having a hard time converging, do not change the time step. With on, ANSYS will change the time step depending on the uh, process of simulation or converg convergence difficulty of the simu simulation. And auto is basically ANSYS determines how to do it uh, on its own. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say auto time step and give it on to make it um, uh, to, to make ANSYS pick the time steps um, or change the time steps as needed. The next one is to define that the load that I'm going to be applying to the top surface is ramped. And the command for that is called KBC. So if I find K, KBC specify ramped or step loading. And here it says loads are linear interpolated ramped for each setup. That's what I want to do. And the other one would be stepped if I gave KBC of one and it says KBC zero is default. So by default is ramped. So what I'm going to do, I'm still going to say KBC comma zero for ramped load steps. The next one, uh, the, or the next command that I want to uh, give here is uh, to the frequency of saving the results and what result to save. The command is out res, which means output results. So let's see what inputs it can receive. So if I come to O, out res, the simulation data written to the database. So the item is uh, basically what kind of results we want to write as in the database. It's all, or we could pick uh, CINT for fracture analysis. We could do NSOL for nodal solution, RSOL for reaction solution, ESOL for just the elements, and on and on. And then there is frequency. We could say at every such at every n step, or each equally steps, or no steps, or all, or just the last sub step. So each of them has uh, its own uh, basically definition. What I want to do is to say write all the results at all the frequencies or all the load steps. Now, the first thing I want to do is to define a time zero for which there is no stress applied to the top surface. But time zero is not actually defined in ANSYS. So what I do is I say time 1e minus 6, a 1 microsecond, which is a small enough time for a equivalence of time zero. and I don't want to apply anything. But I want to say that for this time step, use only one sub step. So that's called n sub t. If I find it here, n sub st. Here it specifies the number of sub steps to be taken to this load step. So we can define initial, maximum, and minimum. And what does what that does is, is that for every load step, it starts with an initial sub-step. So, for example, if we're going from 0 to 1 second and we say 5 sub-steps, the first delta t would be 1 divided by 5, which is 0.2, and the second one would be another 0.2, which is going to be 0.4 seconds, on and on, on up until time reaches 1 second. The next one is, and, and I mean, the second and the third ones are only used when we have auto time step on. So when we say auto time step on, when we did that um, up here, and if we use n sub s tip and uh, define the maximum and minimum number of sub steps, if the simulation is running smoothly, there is no difficulty with the convergence, ANSYS increases the time step or delta t based on the minimum number of substeps that we define for each load step. But if ANSYS has difficulty converging, it will decrease the time step by the maximum number of substeps that we're given here. So I will explain this in the second load step that I will define a stress on the top surface of this block. But right now for the time zero, which we don't have any uh, 
load, I can say n sub st, comma, 1. And don't apply any other um, uh, maximum or minimum number of steps. The next thing is to save this load step as one of the load steps that I want to solve for. And that one is ls, which means load step, write, which means write the load step, and give a number, number 1. In the next time step, which is at time equals 1, I want to have 100 Pascal tensile stress on this top surface. So I say time 1, so time is 1, and number of sub-steps, I want to start with 5. So I want to say from 0 to 5 divided by, or, or 0 to 1 divided by 5 segments, which, which is going to be 0 0.2 seconds time interval. If the simulation has difficulty convergence, change it into 10 sub-steps, which is the maximum, which delta t would be 0.1 seconds. But if the simulation is running smoothly, do not increase or do not decrease the number of uh, sub-steps by, by less than 2. So it's going to be uh, 0.5 seconds for the time step, right? Because it's 1 at the, at the end of the time load step and the previous time was 0, basically, so it's going to be 0 0.5. So 0 0.20, 0 0.2 for the initial, 0 0.1 seconds if the simulation is having difficulty converging, and 0 0.5 is the time step if simulation is running smoothly. If I give that there, now all I have to do is to select the nodes at the top, at the top surface, say N cell, S, location, Y1, which is the length of the block and let's just do that and plot and then sf short for surface load all the nodes and then pressure and because i want to apply positive or tensile uh, stress i give a negative value minus 100 and then all cell e plot and now i have to write this as another load step so ls right load step right and this one is number two now what I have to do is to define this last load step, which is go from uh, second one or time one second to time to two seconds and apply a hundred Newton or hundred Pascal compressive stress on the top surface. So time comma two. Number of sub steps. Again, I want to give the same values, five, 10, and two. And I want to select the um, load nodes on the top surface of the block so n cell s location y1 and let's do n plot again and first i want to delete the uh, previous pressure that i've applied there so sf delete all and press so that is deleted now i want to apply a new surface load now this one is positive because i want to go compressive and all cell to select everything. Now ls write 3. Now my model is ready. All I have to do is to solve for it. And to solve for a multiple load step like this, I would do ls load step solve instead of just typing solve from load step 1 to load step 3, the maximum load steps that I defined for this analysis at every one increment. And if I press enter, it will start solving the uh, analysis for e each of the load steps. So I can press that and see that three times solution is done window showed up. And because it was a very simple analysis, it ended very quickly. I can come here and say Finny and go to general post-processing. And let's do eplot first. And if I come to plot results by pick, I can see that I have multiple load steps. The first load step only had one sub step. And then I had the other load steps defined. So the second load step and the third load step. And each one had its own um, sub steps. So it used uh, the load steps as it picked or at, at, as it liked. I can pick any of the load steps, for example, the 11th one, read, and 
I can say PLN soul U Y. The other thing I can do with transient analysis or when I have multiple load step analysis, I can come to time history post processing. A window like this will show up and I can see the results over time for a specific node. So I want to see the displacement of this plate or of this node um, in the Y direction over time. So I click on add data and pick displacement in Y direction under nodal solution. If I increase the size of this, I can have element solution, reaction forces and on and on. But let's just see that reaction force over there or displacements over there and click OK and pick that node. And if I click on this plot or this button, I can see the displacements of the node in y direction across or, or with respect to time, from time 0 to 1, which was 0 because there was no force applied to it. In a ramped method, went from 0 to, uh, five, to, the ten to the 5 times 10 to the minus 10, all the way to minus 5 times 10 to the minus 10. And because this is a linear elastic, the results are also linear. Let's do eplot. And this time I want to pick an element and see its stresses. So I want to click here, go to element solution, pick a stress, say Y, and pick this element. And now I have to pick a node from this element. So I pick that corner node and it shows the stresses here which if I plot or I to plot it will look like this again because of the linear elastic nature of my model it is linear elastic it goes to um, up to 95 pascals and all the way to minus 95 pascals so in this example we covered the solution features for a transient analysis and we saw the time history plots for a um, node and an element and a node for displacement and the uh, stress what we can also do is to select them and list the data so we can save this as a text file and import it to other software like MATLAB or Python for more post-processing and you could also save it as CSV files through this window and use that for, most pro uh, for more post-processing as well.